Welcome to What is Depression? This course is about the nature of clinical depression. What is it? How is it diagnosed? And how does it relate to other mood problems like bipolar disorder or dysthymia? We'll talk about the symptoms of depression, and I'll try to give you a sense of the internal experience of someone who has depression. I'm Randy Patterson. Before we begin, let me tell you a little bit about my background. I was trained at Western University in Ontario, and I began my career working in clinical and health psychology at hospitals in London, Ontario. Since then, I returned to live in my hometown of Vancouver, Canada. For many years, I was the coordinator of a hospital-based program serving people after discharge for a hospital stay for severe depression. And eventually, that program became Changeways Clinic. We're a private mental health center in Vancouver specializing in the provision of evidence-based therapies for depression, anxiety disorders, and related concerns. In addition to our therapy work, we provide public talks on topics related to mental health. We offer training programs for professionals on cognitive behavior therapy, and we develop resources for both the public and professionals to enable mental health information to be provided more broadly and more efficiently. Let's start by considering a distinction. Depression as a disorder and depression as a word. What is depression? Well, to begin with, it's a word in everyday usage. Oh, this is depressing. I'm depressed. I didn't get the tickets I wanted. Ah, oh, the weather is so depressing today. Depression is also a clinical disorder. Our focus, of course, is on the latter. Now, does the distinction between everyday sadness and actual depression really matter? Is that diagnostic line important? Well, yes, in fact it is. Difficult emotions are normal and are not diseases. There's a problem in our culture. Increasingly, we tend to see normal emotional experiences as signs of illness or disease. But sadness is not an illness, nor is anxiety. Rather than seeing these difficult experiences as signs of illness, we need to develop an acceptance of the full range of human emotion. In this course, we want to focus on the intensities that are very disruptive to life, when the experience of depressed mood becomes unmanageable. So yes, that line really does matter. On the other hand, no. Maybe the line isn't really critical. There is no virus for depression. We want to diagnose breast cancer or mumps because these disorders are very distinct from other causes of the same symptoms. The diagnosis is like a continental divide. If rain falls here, it goes in this direction. If it falls here, it goes in this direction. If it's breast cancer, we do this treatment. If it's something else, we do something else. Depression is not like this. The diagnosis is not a firm dividing line. And for the most part, it doesn't really guide treatment very well. Now there is an exception. Unipolar depression versus bipolar disorder. But distinguishing between levels of pure depression is often actually not too useful. The intensity is a continuum and the diagnostic line is somewhat arbitrary. Many non-pharmacological treatment strategies seem to help to lift a person's mood pretty much regardless of where their mood starts out. For example, if you're clinically depressed, regular exercise is likely to help. If you just have the blues, the same is probably true. Now, a little bit about this course. 
we're focused on defining depression and on demystifying clinical depression. There are some limits. I will not be talking at length in this course about the causes of depression. As well, I will not be emphasizing treatment. There, these are issues for other courses. Now, there's even a problem in our work here just talking about the nature of depression. I'm going to tell you about the specific criteria used by professionals to diagnose depression. You cannot use these to diagnose yourself. The truth is, we don't see ourselves very clearly. Read the list of symptoms for any disorder at all. It's very easy to see yourself in the description. Even a psychologist like me, in order to be diagnosed with a problem, I would have to see someone other than myself who can see me objectively. So, do not use this course to diagnose your own problems or those of your family or your boss. And don't use this as a replacement for professional care. Now, there's a set of brief notes to accompany this course you can use to follow along if you like. Now, you may not be interested in all of the lecture topics that I'm going to cover. Read the descriptions for each lecture and see if you want to skip over some of them. And feel free as well to bounce around and view them in any order you like. Let's get started.